Okay, so this monitor really annoys me because it's so good. Straight up, one of the best monitors I've used for both Mac and PC. And even though it's really good, you probably shouldn't buy it. Let me explain. This is the Doe Spectrum 1, but many of you know it by its previous name, the Eve Spectrum 4K. Now I've been using it almost daily for over a year, and the reason why it excited me so much initially when it was announced was what I call the feature to price ratio. Sure, it's not cheap at $799, although it was cheaper when I first bought it, but I mean seriously, look at what this thing is rocking. Full 4K resolution, 144 hz refresh rate, G-Sync, FreeSync, one millisecond response time, 100 watts of USB-C charging and display output for laptop users, incredible color accuracy, and it just physically looks good too. Jeez, I almost ran out of breath there. Super minimal and sleek with no obnoxious logos. It has pretty much every feature you'd ever want in a monitor. So what is the catch? I mean, there's always one, right? Well, if you Google the name of the company or the product itself, there is a ton of negative publicity. Pre-orders taking months or not shipping at all, refunds not coming through, rumors about the company being super dodgy. Honestly, there's a ton to unpack there. But first, I wanna talk about the actual monitor itself. But before that, a quick word from the sponsor for this section of the video. Remembering a few passwords can be a real pain in the behind. Remembering them all is nearly impossible. And using the same password for multiple accounts is extremely risky. That's why you need NordPass, a powerful password manager, which is the ultimate solution when it comes to digital security. With NordPass, you can store all your passwords in one place, Plus, you can create complex and secure passwords that hackers won't dare to crack. And instead of typing these passwords, NordPass automatically fills in your login details. And you can access your credentials on an unlimited number of devices. NordPass is also a zero knowledge password manager. This means no one can see or access what's in your encrypted vault. And with the data breach scanner, you can find out if your passwords or credit card information has been leaked and where it happened. Make sure you get exclusive access to NordPass's best offer using the link below or use the code CREATEDTECH at the checkout to get an additional one month for free. Okay, let's get back to the Spectrum. Now, if you're wondering, I bought this monitor with my own money and using a different name so Doe couldn't link it back to this channel. This review is obviously not sponsored or influenced by Doe at all. And I've been using my Spectrum monitor since around April 2022 and I wanted to wait before making a review due to reasons I'll cover later on. So what is the Spectrum for? gaming, productivity, laptop users, how about all of the above? Now, like many other people, I wanted a 4K monitor because I spend the majority of my time working at my computer. And 4K gives you a much more pixel dense resolution and scaling options if you prefer. It's especially good for text and UI elements because everything just looks so much sharper and more crisp compared to say, a 1440p or 1080p screen. But I also play fast paced shooter games like Warzone Insurgency and Apex Legends. So I also needed a monitor with a high refresh rate and some gaming features like G-Sync and low response time. Now a 4K monitor is generally not a good idea for gaming because I mean, depending on the game, it can be very difficult for your GPU to push enough frames per second out to take advantage of the higher refresh rate. Now the solution is to either have a really powerful GPU, luckily I was able to pick up an RTX 3090 at a discount, or you can downscale in game and reduce the graphical settings to boost FPS if you have a less powerful GPU. And look, I mean, ideally I'd want a 1440p monitor for gaming, or some people out there would say just use a dual monitor setup, which I have done in the past. However, I do prefer a single monitor setup. I know, sue me, right? And I wasn't willing to compromise on 4K for my productivity work, which is, again, what I spend 95% of my time actually doing at my computer. Now, functionally, I love the Spectrum. Port selection on the back is solid, and I really like the fact that it comes with USB-C power delivery and connectivity. If I'm using a laptop, I just plug it in with a single USB-C cable and get up to 100 watts of charging 
and can output an image to the screen via DisplayPort 1.4. Now, this is pretty cool because not many gaming oriented monitors have this feature. That being said, it still works great in a dual computer setup. Here it is in my 2022 desk setup paired with a dock, MacBook and my gaming PC. I could switch between both systems in a few seconds and still use the same keyboard and mouse. I also haven't had any major issues in the 18 months I've been using the monitor. One minor issue I keep running into though is switching between display outputs, like between my MacBook and Windows PC can sometimes get stuck, like I just get a black screen and need to power cycle the monitor. I tried updating the firmware but I don't think it solved the issue, so I'm not really sure what it is. I want to talk about the design. Actually, this is what initially caught my attention. It looks great. I mean, it's plastic, but matte black and gray, super thin bezels, and the back design is pretty minimal. And it's a far cry from a lot of other monitors out there with obnoxious RGB lights, huge logos, or chunky bezels. You know the ones I'm talking about. The menu navigation is via a control joystick, which is a little soft and mushy, but still better than the individual buttons you get on other monitors. The menu system itself is functional, but nothing fancy, and the stand is sold separately for an extra 99 bucks. It's made of solid metal with a cable management cutout. I do wish more companies would offer the stand separately. I mean, a lot of people use monitor arms and the stand just kind of sits in the packaging gathering dust for years. So why pay for it up front? At least it's not as expensive as Apple's stand. Now the stand itself is pretty solid and doesn't wobble too much and adjustability is decent, but you can't swivel it from side to side. The Spectrum uses an IPS panel, so viewing angles are good and colors really pop. It's also surprisingly color accurate for those who do video and photo editing. 100% of the sRGB and 98% of DCI P3 with a maximum of 450 nits of typical brightness, which isn't incredible, but it's better than other monitors out there. The main selling points of the panel though are, again, like I mentioned before, the gaming features. 144 Hertz refresh rate, G-Sync, FreeSync, one millisecond response time when overdrive mode is enabled, crosshair overlay, and my gaming experience over the last 18 months has been great. Although I definitely did struggle to get over 100 FPS on some AAA rated games like Warzone 2. Again, you really need a beefy GPU with these 4K monitors. Also, you get two screen choices, glossy or matte. I went with matte for the simple reason of glossy wasn't available at the time I purchased mine, but even though glossy costs 100 bucks extra, I'd actually prefer it over matte for the sharper image and deeper blacks. As long as the reflections and light in my room could be controlled, of course. You know, if you live in a really bright room or the overhead lights just can't be turned down, you might get quite a bit of glare on the screen with those glossy panels. Okay, so it's pretty clear by this point that I really like this monitor, but I'm not gonna deny for a second, there's a lot of controversy around it and dare I say risk if you actually want to buy one. When it was first released, there was a lot of hype around it. Eve Devices, which was the previous name of the company that manufactures the Spectrum, really pushed the fact that this product was direct to consumer. And by that, I mean it ships straight from the factory to your front door. There were no resellers or middlemen involved, which also meant better pricing. Problems started to occur pretty quickly though. It was obvious Eve just couldn't keep up with the demand. People spent months and months waiting without receiving their monitor. Personally, it took about three months for me to receive mine in 2022. But judging by comments online, Eve also apparently refused or ignored refund requests for pre-orders from other people. And if you spend just five minutes online, you can see hundreds and hundreds of people complaining. Reddit is full of these threads, product review, and their tweets just get spammed with people complaining. It's endless. And here's the strange part. This is the third time the company has changed its name in the last few years, from Eve Tech to Eve Devices to their current name, Doe. There's been a lot of speculation as to why in online forums, possibly to try and cover up all the negative publicity they've received. Also, Eve slash Doe have been involved in other controversies. Artings accused them of creating fake accounts to manipulate their monitor selection tool, which is what Artings users use 
to choose the next monitor that Artings goes and then reviews. And funnily enough, I've also been involved in my own Eve slash Doe controversy. A few months ago, I was tagged in a tweet from Doe. It was essentially a short video advertisement for their Spectrum monitor, and it included cut up clips from Spectrum review videos made by several YouTube creators, including Dave2D, Optimum Tech, and myself. And that's where it gets interesting. You see, I hadn't yet reviewed this monitor. What you're watching right now is my only review. Doe took this clip of me saying, I guarantee you, you will never want to go back. And they put it at the end of their advertisement, making it seem like I'm endorsing the Spectrum monitor. But if you actually look at the extended version of that clip and the video itself, I'm just saying that about high refresh rate monitors in general and not about their monitor specifically. And seriously guys, I really do urge you to go out and just try it yourselves because once you sit down and you use it, maybe you play a few games on it, I guarantee you, you will never want to go back. Now I would show you the tweet, but when I called Doe out in my reply, all they did was delete the tweet and the video. No apology or anything. And unfortunately, I didn't have time to save it so I could show you in this video. Now, in my experience, this kind of gross oversight, even though it was just their marketing department and you know, probably an intern that's been there for a month, it often extends to the rest of the company. And if you look on all of Doe's socials or on Reddit, for example, they are still currently getting slammed left, right, and center with complaints and unhappy customers. And all of these red flags kind of negate the positives of the competitive pricing as well. I think I'd rather just pay a few hundred bucks more to get a similar monitor from a brand like you know, LG, Asus, or Dell, for example, and don't forget, if you live far away from Doe's factory, shipping will also cost a small fortune. So my advice is, if you really want one of their current monitors or upcoming OLED monitors, wait until you can buy them from trustworthy retailers like Amazon or Best Buy, for example. Or if you really want to buy or pre-order directly from Doe, do it on a credit card so you can do a chargeback if Doe refuses to cancel your pre-order or refund you for any reason. So yeah, overall, a really frustrating product. I have one, I really enjoy using it, but I just cannot recommend it for the reasons I outlined in this video. Maybe Doe or whatever name they change to in a few years will improve. And to do that, they need to sort out their manufacturing process, logistics and customer service, among other things. But it may already be too late because unfortunately, the internet does not forget. But apart from that, if you have any questions, let me know down below and I'll catch you in the next one.